Hey everybody, welcome to Monday Fly Time, summer edition. It's hot here in Vermont. I don't know if it's hot where you are, but it's brutally hot here today. We're not, we're not really used to this. Uh, we, we should get used to it because it's gotten hotter every summer, but um, it's hot up in my fly tying room today under these light, all these lights and things. So uh, um, I'll try to struggle through it, but I hope, I hope everyone's doing well. Julia is here with us today. Julia is coming to us from Cape Cod. Julia, why don't you pop in and say hi? Hi, Julia's everybody. See, see how she's smiling because she's on Cape Cod and I'm not. Well, he just got back from Cape Cod, but I'm also smiling because I caught my first striper yesterday on the fly. So that was very exciting. With Captain Art With Sawyer. With Captain Art, yep. Captain Art is an awesome guide. If any of you uh, get a chance to go to... Uh, oh, my God. If any of you dog. get a chance to go to Cape Cod, uh, Captain Art Sawyer is a, is a wonderful gentleman, soft-spoken, um, long time on the water, ex-commercial fisherman, um, and um, just really, really knows the area very, very well. So anyway, um, back to fly tying. So today um, we're going to tie a, a fly that is fairly, fairly new to me over the past couple of years, and it's called the split case PMD. And if you if you've done any uh, fishing in the Western United States, particularly during the summer uh, with a guide, the guide has probably put a split case PMD nymph on the bottom of your rig. Usually it's fished, usually it's fished on the, on the bottom fly or the lower fly uh, in a dry dropper rig or uh, with an indicator rig. Cause it um, typically, typically not tied, um, tied with much weight, although I've seen beadhead versions. Uh, most people tie it without weight. And so you need something else to get it down. Um, a little split shot on your tippet, or you hang it uh, below a heavier nymph. Um, it's a small fly, um, PMDs. And the PMD is, a, is a, a term from that's used mostly in the Western United States. It stands for pale morning done, which is the... the Kind of the common name of a of a a group of mayflies. Uh, there's lots and lots and lots of them, and you'll find these you'll find these little cream, 14, 16, 18, even 20 mayflies um, <clears throat> that we call sulfurs, uh, pale evening duns, pale morning duns, um, pale wateries. They call them in the UK, but these these little cream flies. Uh, hatch all over the world. I don't know of a trout stream that doesn't get a hatch of uh, PMDs at, at one time or another. And if you if you fish them in uh, spring creeks or tailwaters or waters that are fairly cold, they typically hatch in the afternoon, even at the height of summer. They typically hatch in the afternoon, uh, late morning, early afternoon. And if you are fishing freestone rivers that, are, that warm up during the day, particularly in the eastern United States, then you'll see them right at dark. Um, our, our rivers here in Vermont, uh, we get hatches of these little cream flies just before dark, just, just, as you, uh, just as you can't see anything and the bats come out and pick up your fly off the water. Uh, that's when the what, that's when these flies start. But the nymphs are, the nymphs are around and active all summer long. And it's just a, um, it's a great pattern. The other thing is that it, the split case uh, tying technique is, uh, is kind of interesting. <clears throat> it, um, it imitates the wing buds uh, of a mayfly popping through the nymph case. And just that little hot spot on the, uh, on the fly uh, seems to really attract the fish. It seems to be a trigger to the fish. And um, it's just it's just a great pattern. It really works, and it, and it works uh, from late spring through the fall. So, um, before we start, uh, see if we have any questions. Uh, you fish it dead drift, just like you would any nymph. It's probably <clears throat> you could swing it, but it's not really a, 
a great nymph for swinging. It's more of a, a nymph to fish, and you could fish this nymph uh, anywhere from uh, right in the surface film with a greased leader or unweighted fly to uh, along the bottom um, with a piece of little piece of split shot or uh, hung below a, a bigger, heavier nymph. But uh, it's it's a great it's a great small fly, and um, it's tie, I tie it in 14, 16s, and 18s, and I find that um, I use mostly the 16s and 18s. They seem to be most effective because these flies are not very big. I'm tying this fly on, a, um, on an Orvis wide gap hook, wide gap, uh, uh, wide, wide gap uh, 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 tactical hook, sorry, tactical hook. And it's a fairly short shank. So when you tie this in a 14 on that uh, wide gap tactical hook, you're really getting a, a size 16 fly with with the bite, with the, the hooking power of a, a size 14. So it, uh, it helps you out there in hooking and landing fish. Chase, these would be effective in the Catskills, especially effective in the Catskills. And these will be effective anywhere there are trout. Don't ask me where they'll be effective because these flies, these mayflies occur everywhere. So it's going to be good. It's going to be good anywhere. Anywhere there's small cream colored mayflies, which is pretty much, pretty much every trout stream in the world that I know of. Um, very rare exception. So they're going to be great. Uh, no matter where you fish. So I would try them. And you, you can take this split case concept and, and apply it to different, different nymphs. Although this, this fly is, you know, it's kind of a, a generic color. And uh, this can be used for a wide, wide variety of hatches um, because it does have, you know, most mayfly nymphs are kind of drab. They're kind of, they're kind of tannish, grayish, olivish. Uh, with a rib and a wing case and tails, speckled tails. So um, it's going to work in a lot of different situations. Um, anyway, uh, let's start tying this sucker. Who's going to tie along with me? It's a it's pretty easy fly. Who's going to tie along? Roger Bird, are you tying along? Michael, are you tying along? All right. Nobody's nobody's going to admit that they're tying along. Okay, so let's start. Um, oh, I got to get a hook. I almost forgot. Sorry about that. Forgot my hook. Okay. So we are going to start with this uh, size 14 wide gap tactical barbless hook. So you can see it's got a short shank, um, but a big, nice wide gap. So it, it really holds, really uh, holds the fish well for a small fly. And then I'm going to, I'm using, um, I'm using 12-0 brown thread. You can use any color thread you want, but you want to kind of match the overall color uh, of the fly. Uh, sometimes I'll use yellow with it. And then I'm just going to start my thread. About five turns. I also forgot my scissors. Boy. See what happens when you go on vacation. You lose, lose track of things. So now we got our, uh, our thread attached. And then I'm going to take a wood duck feather. And for your tails, any little speckled feather will work. Um, you could use partridge. You could use mallard flank. You could use widgeon merganser. You could use uh, cocktailione fibers. I'm going to strip the fuzzy junk off the... And this is... Uh, this is a wood duck feather that's really not good enough for, for tying wings on a, a classic dry fly. So that's, I use this for tails and legs. 
and I'm going to grab, I don't know, six to eight fibers. Pull them off from the stem and cut them. So now I got these six to eight fibers in my hand. And I want these tails to be, I don't know, about a about the body length, so right about there, somewhere around there. I'm going to hold that in place, and I'm just going to start to wrap over the wood duck fibers, pulling them a little bit upright and toward me so that they stay on top of the hook. And I like to come down a little bit, just gives the gives the fly a little bit of a curve shape when the when the end of the body kind of curves down like that and then just cut the cut the remainder of your wood duck fibers and i'm going to take size small black ultra wire i've seen uh, this is for the rib and I've seen the rib on this made out of um, monofilament. You could use black or brown thread. Um, you know, anything, anything kind of subtle. Let's put that against the foam. But there's my, there's my black wire. Anything, anything kind of subtle and not too flashy, I think, will work. But the, the black ultra wire uh, is really durable and um, makes a nice... Makes a nice rib in this fly. It looks like the natural. So I'm going to hold this wire right alongside there, and I'm going to take two turns, and then I'm going to pull on the wire, pull it back until it, you know, gets to be about the middle of the shank. And now I don't have to cut off the other end of the wire. And just wrap it. I like to wrap it underneath the hook shank up to about the middle of the body, middle of the shank, and then back to the tail, all the way back to where that wire is. And now we're gonna mix some dubbing. And this is where, this is where I um, depart from a lot of the standard uh, PMD patterns in that I've always had really good success with sulfur nymphs, PMD nymphs, with a mixture of about half brown and half yellow dubbing. And I don't like to mix it too much. I like, I like it to be kind of modeled so that when you dub it on the thread, you get that modeled look to the body. So what I'm gonna do is take a bunch of brown fur, just standard brown, and some fairly bright yellow. And um, this is, this. I think one of these is rabbit. I think the yellow is rabbit and the brown is camel dubbing, which um, Orvis used to sell. Uh, I'm not even sure what it is. Uh, any fine dubbing will work for this. So any uh, you know, super fine dry fly dubbing, even though it's not a dry fly, will work, work well. Rabbit, beaver, um, you know, any of those, any of those things will work pretty well. And to mix, to mix these, kind of start by teasing it apart, and then just lay one on top of the other, and just mix it with your fingers. Just squeeze it, mix it, just like this. You don't want to put this in a coffee grinder because you don't want it mixed too much. You want, you want, you want it still to have that kind of mottled brownish yellow look. So don't mix it too well. That's probably good enough. And I'll show that to you um, on the other camera. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. All right, so then you uh, dub a 
thin noodle on there, a little bit of a taper. So start with a just a little bit to start and then probably about uh, two finger widths of dubbing will do it for this. And if you get a little lump in there, just even it out. You couldn't see that dubbing. Sorry about that. Fix this light here a little bit. Give you a little more light on there. And then wind your dubbing. Make sure that you start right at the base of the tail. And you can see as I'm winding it that I'm getting that modeled look. And stop about in the middle of the shank, right there. And you can see that nice kind of mixed, mixed buggy dubbing, which is the naturals have. And then I'm going to take my uh, black wire and just wind it through there, evenly spaced turns to segment the body and also helps keep that dubbing in place when the fish, all those fish teeth bite it on you. And I'm gonna take three turns and I'm actually gonna helicopter this wire because the thorax is kind of bulky. And I, so typically I just tie off wire and cut it. But on this fly, I do actually helicopter it, which is you just, just wiggle this wire until it breaks. I don't always trust it, but it seems to work fine. So there's your body. And next comes the wing case. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take, let's get the white background there. We're going to take uh, some biots, black biots. These could be goose or turkey. Doesn't matter. And find a couple of fairly long ones. And cut a couple. If you're going to tie more than one of these, I like to cut a whole bunch of buyouts and stick them in a little bowl or something. So now I've got, I've got two pieces of buyout there. And for this fly, I like to tie them in one at a time. With the the point or the skinny part, I want to turn this vice a little bit. The skinny part. pointing out over the eye and the curve up. And I'm just gonna, just gonna attach that kind of to the far side and kind of on top, right about there. And then I'm gonna take the other one, do the same thing on the other side. Like so. Hold it in place with your thumb. And wind over that. So what you want to see is you want to see that kind of V of these two pieces that are going to be pulled over the top. And now I can wind forward a little bit just to uh, cover those by at things up and then wind back right to the base of the wing case. Make sure those biats go all the way to the front of the body. Okay. 
And now, Julia, any questions at this point? Yeah, actually, Roger Burgess asked a great question. Um, uh -huh. He said, you on the wire the same direct direction as you dubbed, but would counter winding be better or does it matter at all which, you know, which direction you're, you're winding? Uh, Tim Flagler would tell you it matters a whole lot, and I'm telling you it doesn't matter a damn bit. So I would say it doesn't matter. But, you know, Flagler would tell you, oh, you got to wind it this way or that way. No, it does, I don't think it matters. Nothing's going to unravel there. You do want to wind it because the thread is, because the thread is going this way. You do want to, if you can, wind that ribbon the same way so that when you bring the when you bring your thread into attaching that wire, it's not pushing the wire back. It's it's going in the same direction as the wire. So I would I would go in the same direction as the thread. And now uh, I'm going to take some yellow foam. This is this is for the uh, the split case part, uh, the the center of it. And um, the foam has no functional purpose here. It's not going to help float the fly because you're going to compress it. It's and I've tried other yellow things like um, you know kind of gold tinsel, and I've tried uh, floss and other things and uh, the nice thing about the foam is it holds it that yellow color no matter what it doesn't absorb water it doesn't darken it stays yellow and um, it just seems to work well so um, even though it's not a functional piece of foam it makes a nice uh, it makes a nice wing case deal so i'm gonna cut just a really you know, about a less than a hook gap of yellow foam. And you could do this. If you're doing a whole bunch of these, you could do it with an X-Acto knife or a razor blade to get a little bit better cut. I'm not terribly worried about it. So that's my little piece of yellow foam. And hopefully I don't have too much. And then you just attach that foam by, you know what? I'm gonna cut that foam in half. I don't, it's too thick. So I'm gonna come and cut it lengthwise just to thin it up a bit. There, that's better. So now I've got a narrower uh, piece of foam there. And you just tie that in right in front of the wing case and compress it all the way down and wind it right back up against those, those little uh, wing pads there the buyout wing pads, cinch it down really good. And now you're just going to take your same dubbing and don't need much because you've already built up that thorax with the foam. And I'm just going to dub a fairly small amount on there and wind your thorax right up against the foam and then nice even turns forward. I see I got a guard here in there, but I can get rid of that. And don't crowd the eye too much on this one. Leave yourself some space because um, when you cut the biots off, they sometimes stick out over the eye. So don't crowd and the foam takes up some, and then just take your foam and pull it forward, stretch it a little bit and come right over the top of the foam pull it straight down three tight turns trim it off and see what that looks like i'll turn it a little bit here i 
and then give it a couple more turns just to secure that foam. And then I find it easiest to bring both uh, sides of that wing case over the top at once. And they're just going to kind of hug the sides of that yellow, like so. And then just come over and pull straight down. Couple turns. And I don't put legs on this. Some people put legs on it. Uh, I don't bother. You could put Parker's legs or I don't have my whip finish tool. There it is. And that's it. That's your split case PMD. I'll give you a little closer look at it here. So that's the split case PMD. It's a cool looking fly and it's quite different. Um, and it's just, it's just really, really effective. It's simple, small. I got a guard hair sticking out there. I'll pull it out. Now you could, if, okay, who's going to ask the question? I'm waiting for the question. Who's going to ask it? Come on. I know you're going to ask the question. Who's going to be the first to ask it? Nobody's gonna nobody's gonna ask the question. You guys, you guys, you yeah, Steven Resin. <laughs> I knew I knew this question was coming. Yeah. UV resin, UV resin. Can we use UV resin on it? Yeah, you can use UV resin on it. Um, should we put some UV resin on it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll put some. We'll put some UV resin on it because that that wing case is um, is a little is a little fragile, and um, it it looks pretty good. Uh, a lot of people a lot of people fish it just like this, and you could you could yes, um, Eric, you could or uh, JJ, you could brush it out a little bit uh, to get to get some uh, uh, leg leggy looking stuff there. Maybe I'll do that afterwards, but I'll get my UV resin because I know you want. I know you want resin. Everybody wants to use UV resin. Yeah. You put a little drop of UV resin on there. It actually looks pretty good with UV resin. Not too much. And I'm using the thin, the thin resin. There we go. Okay. And now you want me to brush out the thorax, right? So now it, it looks a little shinier. It's going to be more durable, a little more, a little more hump to the back of it, which is good because the, the flies do have a kind of a hump shape uh, when they're emerging. And let's take a brush and we'll brush the, brush the thorax out a little bit. Make sure that if you're going to use UV resin that you and and brush it, that you um, use your UV resin first before you brush it, because otherwise you're going to get those little hairs, hairs in your uh, stuck in your resin. There, how's that? How's that? Oh, needs a little brushing on the other side. So those. That, that little fuzz is going to imitate your legs or whatever. How's that? Everybody happy now? Got legs, got UV resin. 
we good do i need do i need to add anything else no okay all right um simple method is using a fine tip black marker to color the sides of the foam black yeah that that um that's interesting that might work i don't think it would get quite as super black as as the biots and you wouldn't you wouldn't have that kind of uh, uh, bulbous encasing uh, but that would be a very quick way of doing the same thing how far can you extend the yellow foam to show more wing emergence i don't know jay but you could experiment with it um, you know the the fly the fly as it's fished is very popular and effective only shows a little yellow peeking through but um, you could certainly if you have um, uh, a lot of sulfur or PMD nymphs in your air you could certainly experiment with um, with uh, making that foam uh, bigger and more bulbous and see what happens see what happens all right um, do we have any more Wow, that was quick today. I guess it was a simple fly. Juliet, did I miss any questions? You didn't. It was very effective, but um, yeah, it was it was short and sweet, and I it was beautiful fly. Uh, yeah, you got the J question about extending the yellow foam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's it. That was the most recent. Wow. I know. Wow, I was fast today. <laughs> How did you do on the stripers? I did okay, Earl. I caught fish every day, did a lot of wading, a lot of sight fishing, had a lot of sun, and um, no monsters. Um, but I did, have, I did have a shot at a very large fish in very shallow water at first light. Send me some pins, Tom. <laughs> pins? Yeah, of where you went. I have some. But... Oh, do you, do you need some spots? No, I actually have quite a few. It's just a matter of okay. getting out, getting out <laughs> before, yeah, yeah. before tide, low tide. Um, um, yeah, Roger, Roger, you could add weight on this fly. Uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't used it with weight. I've used it just like this. Um, but the, you certainly could add weight. There's a lot of stuff going on in the thorax of this fly, and um, adding a bead kind of complicates it and, and shortens the thorax a lot and, and kind of, I think, ruins the effect of the fly. So um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not so sure about a bead, but I have seen it sold uh, as, a, as a beaded, beadhead pattern because everything is sold as a beadhead pattern. I think we're going to see beadhead dry flies pretty soon. But um, um, yeah, you could. Is there a big difference between a PMD and a PED in makeup? Not really, Ralph, unless you're an entomologist. Um, you know, the, the these flies have local uh, variations in size and color. Some of them are more orange. Some of them are more olive. All of them have a all of them have a um, some yellow tinge to the body, and some have cream wings. The little tiny ones usually have cream wings, and the ones that are a little bit um, bigger have a, kind of a bluish gray, a, a blue dun wing. Um, honestly, when I'm fishing the adult, I I typically just fish a yellowish. Orangish, olivish, compare, uh, compare a done or sparkle done. When are you and Tim tying again? I think in two weeks, Julia. Uh, yes, because we have Monday. Uh, Monday is a national holiday, and so then we'll, right. you'll be tying on Monday the twelfth. Um, I haven't heard what you're tying yet, so more to come there. I haven't. I haven't heard what we're tying because I haven't decided. Oh, yet, so is it I your choice? To, is it your? your it's your my turn. choice. I have to. I have to get my butt in gear and think of a. Yeah. And think of a um, maybe super glue some wire in the middle of the shank for weight. Yeah, you could, Earl. You could. 
Um, yeah. Roger, you could also just, um, you could put a little bit of uh, uh, non-toxic wire, fine diameter non-toxic wire under the thorax. But again, that, that thorax gets kind of bulbous with all that stuff going on there. Um, and, uh, you know, it would kind of be difficult. But you could do it. Uh, Tankara fly guy, I think I already tied a stimulator many moons ago on the, on the, on the live uh, thing. I think. I'll go back and check. All right. I don't see any other questions. Last chance for questions. And uh, we have... Um, we have a uh, another live event. I have another live event this week on Thursday at three o'clock with um, with Erica Nelson, uh, the what we call the uh, awkward and clueless, and uh, we we talk about basic basic fly fishing techniques and how to get started and how to how to eliminate some of the mysteries. So if you're a you're a beginning fly fisher, you're new to this game, and you want to ask some questions. Um, no, no question is too simple and, and no question is stupid. We, we answer all the questions because uh, we've all been there and we understand that, that, uh, there's a learning curve. So, um, come on in and on Thursday and, um, ask questions. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pick, I am, I don't think we picked it yet, but we'll pick a basic, basic fly fishing topic, uh, basic entry level fly fishing topic. And we'll talk about that. And then uh, you can ask other questions. Nathan, I don't have a, a preferred caddis imitation. I have, you know, a bunch and I try them all. <laughs> but uh, I do like uh, I do like one with a little uh, CDC on it, CDC wing and dub body. My caddis flies are fairly simple. Need a good video on split shot techniques and positions. Yeah, that's a good one. Ever have trouble getting a compare and done to float? Not with good fly floating, Jake. Not with good fly floating and a and a substantial enough wing. Um, if your compare and duns aren't floating, you can't see them. You're probably not putting enough hair in the wing. That wi that wing does does. Uh, touch the water at the front of the fly and, and does stabilize the flies and help them float. So try putting a little bit more um, pipe, try putting a little bit more uh, wing on your fly. And also uh, don't be afraid of kind of a bulky body on a compare done because mayfly duns are, you know, as opposed to spinners, mayfly duns are, have a pretty robust body and um, a thicker body will help float the fly. So try a little bit thicker body and wing. Uh, Franco, I can tell you that I, that I don't think we're going to be tying an extended body dry fly. I have tied some articulated flies before. Um, I don't, I don't really care for extended body dry flies, so I don't, I don't use them much. Okay. All right. Well, thank you everyone. Um, I hope you're all having a good summer and that you're that you're getting away this summer and and you're able to travel a little bit and get out get out there and and relax and um, love having you here. Those are some great questions today, and um, we will see you on Thursday, and then we'll see you uh, two weeks from today for uh, the the Tom loses to Tim contest again. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon.